Hey there, everyone. How are you doing today? So I wanted to create a video basically sparked by some California leaders talking about creating a new tax on success or tax on millionaire earners. And just so we're clear, that could be not only income, uh, but also in the state of California, capital gains is taxed at the rate as ordinary income. Uh, they are looking to raise the tax rate from an already high of 13.3 up to potentially 16.8%. I understand why are they doing this. There are huge holes in the budget. Uh, there is a real need for more income. I just wanted to walk through some logic. I wanted to check my math. And I wanted to see if you think this holds water. The proposal as it sits today uh, is supposed to generate $6 billion in additional revenue, which is very important. But in today's environment, with the freedom to work anywhere, I wonder, I wonder just how much this is going to help. Fun fact, did you know that 0.5% 0 0.5% of California residents pay 40% of total state income tax collected? So this 0.5% of residents or households is vital, is critical for California to keep if we lose them to other states, that hole gets deeper and deeper and deeper. So what I want to do is just walk through a quick presentation, sharing with you my logic, and see what you see and see if I'm missing anything. All right, so what I'm calling in here is California leaders suggest millionaires should leave ASAP. And really, you know, when you think about it, who is who can leave California the easiest? Is it the millionaires who likely have savings and stocks and 401ks, probably own their house? Or is it the teachers, the policemen, the folks living paycheck to paycheck that can barely afford rent, let alone moving? I think it's unfortunate, but I think the make, people that make a million bucks a year have the greatest flexibility and the greatest freedom to move. And that is why this state-based income tax increase is a horrible idea. California follows New York with a horrible idea. When you are a state and you raise specific taxes, you are essentially opening the door and kicking people out or suggesting people leave. Don't say here, leave, we're gonna take more of your money. So let's look at the logic. So again, this new millionaire tax will take the total income tax rate, federal and state, up to a whopping 54%. So you could work through the end of June into July just paying taxes. Wow. California is already the highest state income tax at 13.3. They're suggesting a new peak of 16.8%. Wow. Why would you stay at 16.8% when you can go to zero? Seriously, zero somewhere else. We are making a fatal flaw. Our, our leadership is making a fatal flaw. Here's the, the ramp that's currently suggested. If you are a million, if you make a million dollars in earnings or capital gains, uh, you'll get taxed a surcharge of 1%. If you make 2 million, a 3%. And if you make over 5 million, an additional 3.5%. Remember, these folks already pay 40% of the state income tax collected 
across the entire state. If we lose these, these people, you, you and I are in big trouble. If you and I's taxes would have to go up 10 or 15% to make up for the gap if we lose these 200,000 households. I understand why the California leaders say, tax the rich, tax the millionaires. They have a hole. The budget plan I read says this will generate $6 billion in additional income tax. I wonder if that's reality. And I understand the math. I mean, the math is simple. I think there's a fatal flaw or a very dangerous assumption. And I think they're wrong. So let's review. Let's look at some facts. 0.5%, so half a percent of California residents actually pay 40% of the income tax already. I think that's amazing. That means 99.5% pay 60% of the taxes, where 0.5 pays 40%. Don't say the rich aren't paying taxes because they are paying taxes. So here are some fun facts. The tax revenue expected by, income tax revenue expected by California is just over a hundred billion. So I rounded it down to make the math easy. If we take 40% of 100 billion, you get 40 billion. So again, 0.5% of households are paying $40 billion. So in the state of California, which I rounded to roughly 40 million people, 200,000 households pay that $40 billion. That 200,000 households is vitally important, critical, paramount. We must keep those 200,000 households in California or, we're, or we are toast. This additional $6 billion goes poof and our hole gets bigger. So who do you think makes up the 200,000 households? Obviously, professional athletes, entertainers, songwriters, actors, executives, and tech employees. You know, when their stocks go public or they sell shares, they can make a million dollars a year. But here's the question. What percent of those 200,000 households will leave and say, no, thank you, California. I'll, leave, I'll live in Nevada or Texas or Arizona or freaking anywhere else, Florida. Is it 10%? Easily. I think 10% e easily leave. I think they're already leaving. 20%? Maybe. 25%? Oh. I hope not. A third? Oh my goodness. Can you imagine what would happen to California if we lost a third of those 200,000 households, which our government and our leaders are actually saying, get out of here? It could happen. So what I did is I did some math. What would happen if we lost only 10%? And I think 10% is a layup. I think 10% is already leaving. So if we lost 10% of those 20,000 households, that means 20,000 households leave. Simple math. If we assume, and again, we have to make some assumptions, that that 10% leaves, that means we lose 10% of our 40 billion we already expected to collect, right? Because if that 10% leaves, they do not contribute their 10% to the original 40 billion. So if 10% leave, we lose $4 billion. Okay, you follow me there? But we do have this extra kicker, right? That 1%, 3%, 3.5%. So we lost 10%. That means we're down to 180,000 households. If the $6 billion plan was out there and we only lost 10%, that means instead of collecting $6 billion, we'd collect $5.4 billion. So in this story, we lose... 4 billion, but we gain 5.4. So the California budget is actually ahead by $1.4 billion. So 
not horrible, but certainly nowhere close to the plan of 6 billion because we lost 10% of those households. But here's where it gets ugly. What happens if we lost 25% of those 200,000 households? which is not out of the realm of possibilities. It's very easy for these millionaires to say, no, thank you, we're gonna leave. So if we lost a quarter of those 200,000 households, we would lose 50,000 households. So if we lost 10 or 25% of the 40 billion, that would mean we would lose $10 billion, right? 40 billion divided by four equals 10 billion. So $10 billion in state revenue not collected because we lost 25% of those 200,000 households. But don't worry, those other 150,000 households that are still left, they're gonna kick in an extra 4.5 billion because they didn't leave. But here's the deal. Instead of gaining 6 billion, we actually lose $5.5 billion. This can happen, folks. If we tax the rich who already pay 40% of our income tax for the state, we could lose, lose, lose. If we lose 25% of only 200,000 households, California is in deep, deep, deep trouble. We could see our revenue collection fall 5.5 billion, even after taking our already high state tax from 13.3 to 16.8. California is not in a good shape. We have a huge spending problem. To think that we can ask 0.5% of our population to spend more, and let's be clear, I am not in that bracket. I do not reside in that bracket. I'm just saying as a middle class person, I don't want to see my taxes go up because 50,000 households leave. Our governor is one year away from screwing you and I because he is going to raise taxes on the millionaires. The millionaires are going to leave and then he's going to have to come back to you and I because we're the only suckers left. This all comes down to this. How many of those 200,000 households that pay 40% of our income, state income tax leave? If 10% leave, we come out just a little bit ahead. If a quarter leaves, we are done. Middle class tax hikes coming. This is a chess game, folks. And right now, our California leaders are losing. They are setting up the chessboard to kick you and I in the teeth. Let me say this again. I am not someone who is going to benefit from this tax hike or not tax hike. I don't play in that realm. I've never been in that realm. So it doesn't impact me one way or the other. It does impact me when those people make the logical decision to get the hell out. And then Mr. Gavin Newsom comes back to us and says, hey, sorry folks. All the rich people left. I got to tax the hell out of the middle class now. That's what's happening. That's what's going to happen. And I don't want to see that happen to you and I. So in the end, what percent of those 200,000 people leave? That's what it comes down to. I don't know. If 10% leave, we, we gain a little. 25% leave, we're in trouble. I think anything more than 20% of those 200,000 households leave, you and I in the middle class are in for a rude awakening in 12 months, 18 months. And I don't want to stand for it. I wanted to tell you about it today because I see the chessboard coming and I don't want you to be surprised. The millionaires have options. And one of those options is where they declare where they live. I don't know what the percentage is. It's more than 10%. Is it 20? Is it 25? Is it a third? I don't know. But a pretty healthy percent of them are going to leave. And that's not going to be good for you and I, the middle class. Sorry, that's what happens when you have 
the governor and the leadership we have in California, the middle class is in trouble. Sorry. <laughs>